We are recording. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Rebecca Pearl, and I am the Financial Literacy Program Specialist for AARP Elder Watch. Um, very excited to have you all today to be able to talk about the finances of the future. Um, please excuse the birds in the background. Uh, they are making quite the chorus of uh, lovely music for us. Um, I decided to go outside and enjoy some of the nice fall weather and um, the birds also decided to sing for us, so please excuse that. Um, but I just want to mention that this is an interactive webinar. Um, so in the chat box, feel free to ask your questions and I will answer them at the end of the half hour. Um, 
And before we get started, I just want to mention a bit about AALT Elder Watch. Uh, we work to fight financial exploitation of older Coloradans through education and outreach, data collection, and by providing resources about scam prevention and financial security. AARP Elder Watch also has a volunteer staff helpline where you can report scams, financial exploitation, or receive peer-to-peer -peer financial counseling. Dial 1-800-222-4444 to be connected to a trained volunteer. Now to the topic at hand, finances of the future. Uh, if I can treat oops. Okay, so today we are going to discuss um, budgeting tools, online bank accounts, peer-to-peer -peer money transfer apps, and stock trading stock trading apps, and hopefully, hopefully answer all of your questions as well. We live in an ever-changing world, and I feel like there's a new piece of technology or software app or app out every single day. And it can be really difficult to know what you need to do in terms of tech and how to properly use the array of tools offered. So today we're just gonna break this all down and there will be uh, time for questions at the end. Um, but first, before we get started with the meat of uh, the information, just some general internet and phone safety. Um, so this will not be the first time that you hear this today. Um, shopping online, checking bank accounts, or checking sensitive information can be incredibly risky while on public Wi-Fi. So if you have to check your personal information well on public Wi-Fi, make sure to use a VPN or virtual private network to protect your information. Um, so basically what a virtual private network does is that it intercepts anyone trying to steal your information by showing it as a bunch of gibberish, basically. Um, so they try to get your information and then it shows up just as a bunch of mumble jumble and they do not succeed. Um, and this is just important when you're in public so that you know people can't access bank account information, anything that would be sensitive and um, Cause, cause damage if it got in the hands of someone um, trying to do malicious things with it. Um, so the difference between a public network and a private network is that private networks are most commonly found in homes and offices, um, and they also generally require a user set password. Um, so speaking of passwords, if use a strong and different password for each account you have, each account you have, different password. Um, I know you're probably like, how am I supposed to remember all these passwords? Um, but it's a lot safer to have multiple different passwords uh, for different accounts than using just the same one and never changing it. Also, speaking of changing passwords, make sure to change those every two to three months or so. Um, and if you haven't tried out using a passphrase, I highly recommend it. Um, so that's in using a phrase with sen or sentence mixed with capital letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and special symbols. Um, and this can be the key to protecting your sensitive information. So I believe that every single person should have a budget, no matter what. Um, I personally have had and stuck to a budget for years, but mainly because I do it all on my phone um, using one of these budgeting tools. They're perfect for tracking uh, spending, and some will even give you insights on how to save more money each week or month. Um, you're also usually able to connect all of your accounts. So you can connect retirement accounts, uh, credit cards, any bank accounts from across the board, um, also through credit unions. Um, and then some apps also allow you to connect with one of the three major credit bureaus um, and then get updates on your credit report. So for example, I've, I'm connected with TransUnion. And so every single week they tell me that um, if there's any changes to my credit report and if my credit score has gone up or down. And I find that very useful just in terms of keeping track of all of the things I spend my money on. Um, so we're just gonna go over a few of these uh, budgeting tools real quick, um, because there's a ton of different options. Um, these are just some of the highly rated ones, but they're not recommendations offered by 
AARP or AARP Elder Watch. Um, they're simply options that you can independently look into using uh, for yourselves. So Mint is this all-in-one tracking tool for creating a budget, um, paying tool, paying bills and tracking investments. So some of these apps, you're able to actually pay your bills within the app. Um, and so this is one of them. And you can also track your investments, having them uh, connected with your different investment accounts. Um, it's free. Um, you download it on your phone. And I don't know how they're, I know they do have a website. Um, I don't know how their website interface is, but I'm sure it is quite nice um, because most of these websites uh, in the highly rated section uh, do have do have good websites. Sorry, most of these apps do have good websites as well. Um, so it's nice to be able to do it on your phone and then switch over to the computer if you need to. Um, it's also free, so that's good. Just, just that download in uh, the App Store or making an account online. Um, some of these are not free. Uh, you need a budget. YNAB is the next one. And it's a budgeting software that helps set financial goals, manage accounts, and share financial information with others. So the Part here that I find very interesting is that you can actually share that financial information with other people. So if you have a spouse or a loved one um, that you're trying to help with a budget or just want to manage your accounts together, um, you can do that with this platform. Um, and so they do a 30-day free trial, and then it's $6.99 a month. And then Honeydew is intended for couples specifically, um, but also can be used for um, aging parents or younger uh, adult children that are trying to get, trying to set them up with a budget for the first time um, because it helps develop not only a budget and manage that budget, but financial literacy habits in general. Um, so that's everything from, you know, are you spending your money in the way that your values say you should um, to just talking about money with your loved one? Um, so it is free at first and then has paid advanced features. Um, and then Good Budget uses the envelope model. So that is basically people used to take physical envelopes and put the amount of money for each thing uh, that they would be spending that week or that month um, in an envelope. And you could only open that envelope specifically um, to use for that, you know, uh, topic. Um, so that uses this, the Good Budget uses this model, um, and it works for some people and does not work for other people. So it's really, you know, dependent on what you uh, find the best. And with all of these, you might have to play around and find one that just works best for you because they all do have different features. Um, and so again, Good Budget is free, and then they have additional purchase options. So switching over a little bit to peer-to-peer -peer money transfer apps, these are all of the rage right now. Uh, I use them all the time with my friends um, because I, I, we joke that we, we send the same $20 back and forth um, when we split groceries and uh, go, not, not anymore go to restaurants, but uh, get takeout and have to split that bill. Um, these are great for it. Um, so they let you use a bank account or a credit card or a debit card, but there may be fees if you hook up a credit card or debit card um, to pay friends and family directly from your phone. Um, PayPal and Zelle do have um, websites. Venmo does not. Venmo is only done on the phone, and we'll talk a little bit more in depth about these options on the next slide. Um, but there are very little protections offered when you use these apps. So. Um, any sort of insurance that you get when your money is in the bank um, is gone with this. You, once you type in the amount of money that, and press send, it's, it's gone. There's no way to get that money back. Um, and it can be quite hard to dispute those transactions as well. So we'll talk a little bit more about this. Um, Venmo works best on mobile, um, and they have a social feed for payments. So when you send a payment to someone, you have to include some sort of note, um, and it goes on a public feed that everyone can see. Um, so that you know, may be a risk factor if you are trying to keep 
your transactions more private, um, but you can also set it that the transaction is completely private from anyone else. Either it can only be seen by friends that you have and friends the other person has, or only can be seen by you and the person that you're sending that money to. Um, and then payments tr get transferred in one to three business days, but you can pay a little extra fee to get those transferred instantly. Um, so Zelle is actually used on banking platforms and it can be used to send money directly from your bank account to a friend's bank account. So you don't have to make a new account a lot of times to use Zelle. You can just open whatever banking app you're using or whatever banking website you're using to send that money. Um, and it was really cool, actually. I've only used it once. My friend um, was like, I'm going to pay you this money um, and sent it to me via her bank account. And then it sent me a text. Uh, and I opened that link, only open links that you get in text messages if you know who they're coming from. Um, and then all of a sudden that money was in my account. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and there's no new account needed as long as, you know, the bank uses Zelle for payments. Um, so PayPal is the most common and it works on phones or websites. Um, a lot of times you'll see PayPal used for online shopping. Um, if you're, you know, buying from an individual merchant, a lot of times they'll use PayPal because it offers a little more protection. Um, and you can choose to pay either friends or family or um, gifts and services. And so if you are sending money to a person that you do not know, always click gifts and services because that ensures that if that is a fraudulent uh, transaction, you are able to likely get that money back versus if you use friends and family um, that automatically says, okay, you know this person uh, there's, and there's no protections for that. Um, so that's my little fun fact about PayPal. Cash App only works on a phone um, and does have a social feed for payments as well. Um, the thing about Cash App is that they have no customer service line. And a lot of these uh, apps actually don't have a customer service line. Um, so you have to do all of the disputes within the app. Um, and that can be a really time consuming process. People can find it a little difficult as well, um, especially if you don't know where to look. Um, but if you have to do a dispute in the app, um, always look for that contact us button or support button. And hopefully that will connect you to um, the right person to contact and get whatever you need fixed fixed, as opposed to um, Googling that number and then ending up on the phone with the scammer, um, which we've seen a lot with Cash App. Google Pay and Apple Pay um, are features that come, if you already have an iPhone or a Google phone, um, they an Android phone, sorry, um, they come already built in. Um, Google Pay can be synced with a Gmail account um, or with the app. Um, and these allow for money to be sent back and forth to people with the app as well. Um, and these transactions can be done for free, although I believe both of them offer um, cash back credit and credit incentives. Um, so that is also uh, past the peer to peer money transfer part, um, a way that you can spend money actually. Um, so online banking, this almost every single bank has an online banking platform now, even credit unions do. And um, it's really nice to have a platform where you can go in and check um, all of your transactions and every single thing that, and you know, money coming in, money going out. A lot of these bank account apps have um, become a really sophisticated. So they'll show you, you know, total monthly spending, is that less than last month? Is that more than last month? How, how can you save money for the next month? Um, and you can check the bank account super easily on your phone um, with the app or by making an account through your bank just online. Um, you can send, you can use it to send money back and forth like, like we talked about with Zelle. Um, and you can also deposit checks. But when you're depositing checks online, um, 
make sure that you write on the back of it when you, where you endorse it for deposit only. Um, and do not throw that check away until you see that it has been deposited in your account and it hasn't bounced for two days. Um, you can wait longer than two days. I, I would say wait two days before spending that money. Um, and then you're also able to toss that check once it's been officially deposited. But make sure to write for deposit, uh, yeah, for mobile deposit only um, when you're endorsing that. Um, and a lot of times when you're depositing checks online, they give you very specific instructions as to how to do that. Um, each bank is a little bit different, so that also helps as well. Um, and you can pay bills online too through a lot of these um, bank account apps. Um, a lot of them just have ways that you can set up directly uh, direct payments for bills, reoccurring direct payments for bills. Um, and that can be really helpful in just making sure that those bills get paid every month. Um, I oftentimes sometimes forget uh, to send in a payment or two. Uh, so this just makes it so it happens automatically and I don't have to even worry about it. Um, and it's, it's pretty easy to set up. They do ask for uh, account information from um, whatever service you're trying to connect, but fairly easy to set up and a safe way to send money. Um, and then you can receive your bank statements online. Um, so I used to get bank statements every single month in the mail and would look at them and then throw them in a drawer and leave them there until I moved to the next place um, in which I would then throw them all away. And that is not the best way to manage your bank statements. Um, but now I can just get them, I get them all online, they go to my email, um, and then I'm able to check those and make sure that everything is correct for the month, um, and then not have a huge stack of paper that um, I'm worried about recycling because identity theft, um, and uh, I'm just carrying around for years because it's just all in my email. Um, so that is um, online banking. Really, if you don't use it yet, I highly recommend checking out what your bank offers um, because there can be really good um, ways to manage your money and just easy ways to uh, send payments back and forth safely, stuff like that through these websites. So stock trading apps are kind of new on the horizon. Um, so they focus mainly on micro investing. So that's having, you know, five, ten, fifteen dollars and throwing it in to one of these apps and they'll they'll give you, you know, a small share of a stock um, and then you just see how it grows. Um, but these all work slightly differently. Um, some of them have opt-in features that round up purchases to put money in an investment account. Um, some of them have a minimum of five dollars to start an account but some of them have a minimum of a thousand dollars to start an account so you have to check uh before you open up an account depending on how much money you are wanting to put into that investment app platform um before you you know go ahead and take that leap um so we'll talk about the you know different um apps in a second but they already have clear differences where Acorns only offers ETFs. It's the only thing that you can do through that platform, whereas TD Ameritrade offers individual stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, bonds, and currency. Um, so there's, you know, a wide variety of options with these stock trading apps. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little more about it on the next slide, but they can be really helpful for people just starting to invest as well. Um, and so just really important, SPIC does insure investment accounts through these apps up to $500,000. Um, so they actually do have insurance and protections um, on like those peer-to-peer -peer money transfer apps. So just a few uh, options. Merrill Edge is best for com customers with Bank of America because they are synced together. Um, they give you robust third-party research on different stocks. Um, but this probably isn't the best option for advanced traders because there's going to be fewer securities offered. Um, Stash is one of the ones that is good for people that are, 
you know, just beginning to invest um, because it teaches you how to manage a portfolio. Um, but there is an ongoing monthly fee. So that's one thing that you have to look at closely with these apps is that there may be fees. Um, the fee may be um, a percentage. It may be just, you know, a flat fee. Um, it really depends on the app. Um, but there's no investment management with uh, Stash either, so that may make it a little more difficult as well. Um, Acorns does automatic roundups, so when you make a purchase, um, they round up to the nearest dollar, and then um, you end up that money ends up in a savings account that goes towards investments. Um, they have something called the Found Money program, um, so that is just a way where they basically give you extra money for um, for investing with them. Um, and then some of the downsides is that they do have a smaller investment portfolio. So if you're, you know, a little more advanced, might not be what you're looking for. Um, and then high fees for small account balances. So if you're not raking in, you know, a ton of money for um, these investments uh, and not having a ton of money being saved, then it might have a little bit of a downside. Um, Ally Invest is commission-free trades uh, for eligible U.S. stocks and ETFs, so a lot of people find that uh, very helpful. Um, and then they have no account minimums, so uh, that's really nice because you can start an account with a dollar, um, but there are transaction fees for mutual funds, so that's something to keep in mind when um, investing further. Robinhood is free. There's no account minimum. Um, they do cryptocurrency trading um, and other currency trading. Um, so that can be good for, you know, people trying to um, trade cryptocurrency. I am not going to talk about that today. Um, it is quite complicated, um, but Robinhood does not have any retirement accounts. So that is definitely a downside, especially when we're looking always at saving for retirement. Um, and just to mention, and not going to go into this more, but saving for retirement can start any time. Um, so, you know, 22 or 62, saving for retirement can start any time. Um, so having that re retirement account option is a good idea. Um, and then TV Ameritrade, as mentioned earlier, um, is good for active investors and beginners um, because they have no fee on, uh, no commission on online stock, um, but it can be costly for any sort of broker assisted trade. Um, so those are the rundown on stock trading apps. Um, again, lots of options. This is just the surface of them. Um, so I highly recommend, you know, if you're looking into any sort of these in, uh, stock trading options, um, do it yourself uh, investments. Um, look through all the options and find what's best for you. All right. Okay. Had a little bit of uh, trouble getting my uh, slides to change, but uh, before I take questions, I just want to leave you with a note about being aware of frauds and scams. Um, so, we talked a lot, a lot today about all the different options you have for storing your money, um, for investing your money, for sending your money back and forth. Um, and scammers are at every corner trying to uh, make that a lot more difficult for you. So always check the legitimacy, legitimacy of an email or a link um, about your account. A lot of times emails can look very, 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 very official. Uh, looks like they're coming exactly from your bank, um, and then they are not. And they have, you know, one link or something that um, takes you to a fraudulent site. Um, none of these apps or websites are going to call you for information. So if you get a call asking for personal information, and this really goes across the board, Social Security is never going to call you, the IRS is never going to call you, just hang up. Um, don't share bank account information, personal information, or passwords with anyone. It is your personal information, um, so keep it personal and keep it safe. 
Um, and if you need assistance with these apps, just make sure, again, that the customer, the company has a customer service line um, because a lot of these new apps do not and all of the disputes must be done in the app. Um, I'm having trouble changing these slides, um, but that is the content that I have for today. So I will take questions um, with our last five minutes. Uh, so if you would like to send those in the chat, uh, that would be lovely. Let's see, I have one right now from Jess. Which budget tool would you suggest if I'm trying to be a caregiver for an older parent? Um, I think one of the ones that has um, functionality for multiple users would be the best, um, just because then you can have the parent on one side, um, you know, managing their account, feeling like they are still have independence over their finances, um, while, um, you know, the kid is also on the account managing um, the um, managing the finances as well. So the ones that are more joint, I think would be best, um, as opposed to just setting up an older adult parent uh, with, you know, a, a, a budget platform and having them use it themselves. Um, so I have a few more questions. What other financial, to, uh, sorry, one second, let me open these. Okay. Um, They were in the chat. Okay, uh, do stock programs work online or do you have to have a smartphone with the app? So a lot of the stock programs actually, um, you do have to just have the app. They don't have a website. Again, that depends on uh, the app. Um, Robinhood, for example, is just an app. TV Ameritrade does have a website. Um, so it really depends on um, the platform. Um, and then some of them, you can only access some features uh, through the phone and then others on a website. Um, and then Frank asked, what other financial management tools do you think will be developed in the coming years? That is a good question. Um, I think we're gonna be turning a lot to artificial intelligence for our financial management. Um, so as we see you know, more developments with um, AI, um, I think that's gonna be, um, the next place that financial management tools go. Um, so, you know, could be anything from measuring your emotional state that day uh, to show, okay, you might be at risk for spending, right? People emotionally spend all the time. Um, um, to just being able to, you know, having, having your app tell you that uh, next week you're gonna lose money and um, here's how you can save this week. Um, I think we're gonna see a lot on the horizon with artificial intelligence and also just um, with, with our, with, you know, technology being interlinked, the internet of things, I think we're gonna start seeing a lot more of our finances be looped in with the internet of things as well. Um, and so, you know how you can like control the temperature in your house on your phone with like the new Nest or whatever, and they have those security systems that you can see on your phone and stuff like that. And they're all connected um, on the internet of things, that's so-called. And I think that we're gonna start seeing um, financial management seep into that internet of things and become a part of just how, how our daily lives are run. Um, yeah. So that, we are at the bottom of the half hour. Um, so I thank you all so much for attending. This was recorded, so if you want to check it out, um, again, it will be on YouTube in a few days on AARP Elderwatch's uh, channel. And we have a bunch of these presentations coming up um, within the next two, three, how many months are left of 2020? Um, Till the end of 2020, we are doing presentations throughout. Um, so please tune in to more of those um, on a variety of different topics from scams to more financial literacy. Um, and we are happy to share this information with you. I hope you have a 
great rest of your day and uh, we will see you next time. Thank you so much.